Summer, 1996. It was a lovely day, clear skies. In fact, not a cloud in sight. The air was clean and the street looked happy. It's funny, isn't it, how a street can look happy? In the morning, if you watch the worker bees all shuffling along to their office jobs and the street looks hopeful, ready for the day ahead. But in the evening, or should I say the early hours of a cold Sunday morning, it, it looks sad and zombified. The drunk and the dead, moaning and groaning, they all come out to play. Oh, at least try and find a taxi home. But in that very moment, 17 minutes past 11 on a Saturday morning, it was like nothing I'd ever seen before. It had changed my life forever. And Daisy's. She's a bright girl, our Daisy. I remember her walking down the stairs, her arm barely able to reach the banister. And she was excited, brimming with giddiness. And she had a folded piece of paper in her hand. And she looked up at me and she smiled with a rare collection of teeth she'd just started to grow. And she pushed the piece of paper towards me and I could see what it said then. To Santa's Grotto. June. It was June. She was already making her demands. Impatient. Takes after her dad. Well, before I could say anything, the puppy dog eyes are looking at me and the bottom lips trembling, just waiting for that one word. Right. And you know, the second I gave in, the puppy had gone back to the kennel and the trembling lip was no more. She was quite the actress growing up. I looked at the list and it was toys, all toys. A brum car, a tickle me elmo, beanie babies, and then in brackets underneath with small writing it said, and he will do Father Christmas because I know you're a very busy man. I thought to myself, well, I need to go to the Arndale. I can go in a few shops, I'll take Daisy with me and we can find a post box. Oh, but. I was going to go the day after, but I remembered the football, the Euros, how could I forget? And we were hosting, and on the Sunday, Germany were meant to play Russia. Trying to invade us again, aren't they? Daisy's dad chuckling to himself. So when does she want to post this letter? Does she know it's only just been last Christmas? What's her excuse this time? Well, yeah, she does know it's only just been last Christmas and her excuse, well, <laughs> her excuse is perfect. I know you'll be very busy Father Christmas, so I'd like to give you more notice. How can I say no to that? So we pack ourselves on the number 34 bus. It's jam full of people, there's not a window in sight. I've got sweat pouring down my face and my eyes are puffy. And Daisy? Well, Daisy's wearing four layers, a woolly jumper and a bright blue anorak. In the winter, she'd be out in the back garden doing snow angels. In shorts and t-shirt. You can't tell her. She won't listen. Window shopping below when we arrive followed by tea and toast in Woolworths Cafe. You can't go wrong in there. Besides, Daisy likes looking at all the TVs and radios all lined up on the shelves. One day, I'll be on the big box like that, she said. I watch her as she skips, up, kip, skips off up the aisle and she pokes her hand in the pick and mix and sees how much she can jam inside 
I ran her out of pocket. Maybe one day she will be on TV. Crime watch. She tugs on my coat as we march down the escalator stairs. Mummy, when are we going to post a letter? Soon, I say, and I meant it as well because give it another 10 minutes and she'd be crying and stropping and rolling round on the shopping centre floor. But before we could post the letter, the plans changed. The day changed. Everything changed. The tannoys bellowed and the police arrived and there was neon yellow filling every pocket left as they calmly escorted us to an exit. They were shouting and screaming and people throwing questions in the police officers' faces. I watched one man push his way to the front. My little lad's still in there. I gripped hold of Daisy's hand. My clammy tiled palm wrapped round her ice cold fist as we shuffled out the door. Something wasn't right. The fresh air hits our faces, but it's colder now and the sky's gloomier and the street's not happy anymore. But on this street, perched politely on the pavement, is a post box. And through the, the strips of police tape, Daisy spots it. Look, Mummy! A post box for Santa! She tries to run for it, but I won't let her go. And she starts crying like everybody else. So we make our way to the far end of the street. And you can just about see that post box. Safety. I thought. But then I saw it in her eyes. I'd seen that look her times before and I'd see it a million times again, I'd hope. Excitement, adventure. She didn't know what was going to happen. She didn't know how this would affect our city. Just like she didn't know she was going to break her wrist when she fell out of the tree in the back garden. She slips her fingers through mine, letter in hand, and runs for the post box. Time stops and I, and I freeze and I, I know I should run after her but I just can't bloody move. The police spot her and, and they dance towards her with the, their arms outstretched and <clears throat> and usher her back to my side. And then, then it happened. My ears rang as I hit the floor and I couldn't see a thing. And smoke and ash are in my eyelids and I'm staggering into the dust. And I scream out her name in the hope that she'll come running back to me but Blue lights flicker in the distance and it helps me make out a silhouette a few steps ahead. Daisy? Daisy! I finally make it to her side and I, I pick her head up in my hands and... Daisy, say something please! Normally you can't shut her up but... But now... Silence. I gently stroke her tarmac torn elbow. And she cries. She cries and I can't believe it. In this one moment she's okay. I pull her tighter to me and I'm squeezing her and I'm hurting her more and she's crying and I, I couldn't help it. Mother's instinct. Suddenly there's arms around us 
Don't worry, love. You'll be all right. As a policeman picks us up and shoves us off towards an ambulance. As we shuffle off up the street, the street is panicked and startled. When we get to the ambulance, they put tin file around us. You look like the tin man in the Wizard of Oz. She chuckles and then grabs my hand tighter than ever before. We soon got back into our old routine as, as best we could. But Daisy, Daisy just wasn't right. She didn't like the TV on too loud. We couldn't use the toaster. She didn't want to be on that big box anymore. They say that you could hear that bomb 15 miles away and the, the smoke, it rose up into the sky and apparently it looked like a mushroom, which Daisy was livid about because she hates the vegetables. <laughs> oh, I, I know we were lucky. We got away with a few scratches and a few bruises and it could have been much worse. Well, the worst thing was after everything she went through, she felt bad because she lost the letter and Father Christmas would have to wait for another. One Saturday, there's a knock at the door and it startles Daisy while well, I go and answer it. And I open the door and I'm greeted by a brown cardboard box. And on the side in big letters, it says Daisy. I bring it into the front room and Daisy pounces, excited eyes return. And she opens the box and pulls out a letter and her list from that day. Dear Daisy, I've heard you've been a very good girl and definitely deserve a present from yours truly, Santa. I know you were worried that I didn't get your letter, but don't worry because one of my elves found it and brought it back to the North Pole for me. Look after your mummy and daddy. I watch through teary eyes as she opens present after present. The brum car, the beanie babies, it's all there. Then she says, Mommy, this one's for you. And pushes a letter into my lap. I open it. And it's a spa day, all paid for. I look at Daisy's list and something's been added to the bottom. Something to take the weight off Mommy's shoulders. I was speechless. And so was Daisy. For once. So here we are, back on that street, and you'll never guess what's still there. That bloody post box, after everything that happened, it survived. <laughs> but Daisy didn't. She'd be turning 28 this year. She had a lovely childhood. It was full of love and, and life and she always lived every day to the fullest. I think that's what that day taught her. A very valuable lesson if you ask me. Make every day count. And she did. Until she was 22. And she lost a long battle with leukaemia. She passed away peacefully and we scattered her ashes in the back garden. I miss her every day, I do. So that's why I come back here, year after year, without fail, to post that letter. Oh, I've still got it. Couldn't lose it. <laughs> She'd come out, wouldn't she? 
I put it in an envelope and I address it back home. It's silly, I know, but it helps for me to know she's still here. Bossing us all about, even Santa. Anyway, it looks like rain, I'd better get going. I've left me washing out, haven't I? This street looks happy again now. And I think Daisy would too.